so the K nearest neighbor algorithm is another type of supervised machine learning, um, you know, algorithm or classifier. That's uh, we can use that to solve uh, classification and regression problems. To load it in Worker, you simply just click Choose here from the classifier tab. Then we go to uh, this folder, Lazy. Then we choose this IBK. All right. Um, so we consider this KNN um, a lazy learning, non-parametric. Uh, so lazy learning algorithm in the sense that it doesn't perform any training, especially when you give it some training data. Uh, instead, what it does, um, it kind of just stores the data uh, uh, and, and uh, the data during the training time and doesn't perform any calculation until when you try to perform some query on the data set. Okay, uh, it's non-parametric in the sense that you know, it doesn't make any assumptions about the underlying data distribution, okay? So simply put, um, it just kind of groups uh, data uh, that belongs to uh, specific data points around it. Uh, we can configure this a little bit. You can see uh, here we have different parameters like KNN1. Um, so here, uh, when we say KNN equals to one, here simply we just, this is the value of K. Right. So, for example, uh, if we choose a K of five, what that means is that we'll use the nearest five neighbors and so on and so forth. If we say 10, then if the value of K is equal to 10, then we'll use the 10 nearest neighbor. So uh, this is a hyperparameter, um, you know, uh, value that we can fine tune. Again, uh, the other thing is that we can, um, so it kind of uses a distance metric. So if you click here, you see that uh, it kind of just uses the Euclidean, you can use Manhattan, um, Minkowski distance, all these are distant metrics that are used to calculate, um, uh, given a new data point, um, how close it is to the nearest neighbor. Okay, so click on okay, and you can actually try uh, these different distances and just see how it kind of works. All right, so uh, I'll just leave this as default. Uh, click on start. <clears throat> Uh, right on, you can see that, um, you know, the accuracy isn't very great, right? And here we have a huge number. It's a large number of, uh, you know, false negative. So what if I try to just fine tune this a little bit, maybe say three, uh, okay. Maybe I can reduce this to maybe three also. Uh, click on start. Yeah, we're able to improve the accuracy. At the same time, uh, it appears that we are able to reduce this considerably, like to 87, okay? Uh, and actually our recall went up compared to the previous one, which was actually 79.4, 103. So just fine tuning some of these uh, different things can help improve the performance or predictive uh, power uh, uh, of your KNN. So another thing about KNN is that, um, you know, we can use it for credit rating, right? Um, where we want to determine, these are some of the applications, uh, determine the individual's credit rating, right? You compare with other similar characteristics, right? Uh, again, you might have come across that or, uh, in stock price prediction, where we want to predict values of unknown entities, right? So it can be useful to predict, you know, future stock prices based on maybe historical data. Um, also in computer vision, um, we can use KNN for image classification, right? Where we want to group uh, maybe dogs and cats together, right? Into uh, specific classes. So pretty neat you know, to use KNN, okay? Even in recommendation systems, you know, we can actually use this um, to determine um, maybe on a platform like uh, Netflix, of course, uh, we can uh, suggest content to the user that are, they are more likely to watch by just analyzing their behavioral um, uh, characteristics on what they watch, okay? One of the advantages or some of the advantages of using KNN, um, basically is simple to understand and implement as we can already see, it supports both uh, classification, uh, supports both classification and regression problems, right? And I think also, as you can see here, performs very well, you know, given some representative data. Um, the other demerit or the other disadvantage or the disadvantage of using KNN is that we have to define our K, right? So you need to figure out the optimal K, right? So um, again, this number 
it's not very clear, but there are other techniques of how to determine this. Uh, the other thing is that KNN is very sensitive to irrelevant features, okay? That's going to affect the performance, all right? Uh, again, also, it kind of uses high memory storage, um, given the nature of high rewards, okay? Um, yeah, and that's it on uh, KNN. So the next thing we're going to be looking at um, is uh, support vector machine. 